Hello friends, how are you doing today? This is third part of my weightless journey and uh, recently I weighed as little as uh, 206 pounds but right now I weigh uh, 200 po 210 pounds so it came back a little but I think uh, soon I should weigh 205 pounds plus minus 4 pounds so I, I should be able soon to stabilize it at 205 pounds next step gonna be to get to 200 pounds and stabilize it at 200 pounds once I'm 200 pounds I'm gonna be satisfied with my weight however this video is not about how much I weigh right now and what my goals are right now it's about my weight weight not weight loss but weight journey throughout my life you have to know that I was born and raised in communist Poland and in communist Poland if you wanted to eat enough you had to get food from black market. You couldn't just, you know, feed yourself on what the government will allow you to buy. So there was, you know, no extra food. So my weight, I wasn't starving, I wasn't malnutritioned. However, my weight was, was pretty much perfect until my teen years, until pretty much I begin puberty. And uh, when I begin puberty, my mother during early 1980s she went to the united states and she was able to send some food to us and some money which allowed for me to gain possibly right now i'm guessing you know 10 to 20 extra pounds but that's it wasn't too much then i started running with my friend hubert and uh, because we were running and we were exercising i lost that weight and i was in good shape however I had pretty rapid growth you know between ages of 15 and 17 and uh, I wasn't gaining weight I was just gaining size I was getting taller um, and my father usually would make one chicken for three of us my father my sister and me on Sunday but because I was growing so fast he started making two chickens one for me exclusively by the age of 18 i couldn't stop you know my growth slowed down in a significant way pretty much stopped halted because i did go through tertiary growth spur when i was uh, between ages 23 and 26 i do not know when exactly because i went from six feet flat to six feet and a half an inch which i am right now so uh, age, coming back to age 18, you know, I'm still eating that extra chicken on Sunday, but I'm not growing that much anymore. My growth has halted. So uh, I'm gaining weight. So I went 30 pounds overweight. And then I came to the United States and initially I got uh, an armor. I got addicted a little to the fast food in the United States, McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's. And the uh, most I weighed at the time when I was in high school was 255 pounds. 255 pounds. And I looked pregnant. People were laughing at me, dude, you're pregnant. People were pointing me with fingers. So uh, then, you know, I decided to lose the weight, but I was doing it in a very unhealthy manner. You know, I was starving myself and rewarding myself with junk food, with ding-dongs, something disgustingly sweet. And, uh, hey, you know, I lost weight. I was 190 pounds. I had beautiful abs showing, you know, but I wasn't happy. I was miserable. I was feeling sick because I was sick. Let's be straight. And then I regained the weight, but I was able to keep it to around 230, 240 pounds. And that's how much I waited for a long time. Later on, you know, uh, we were short on money, short on food. I was too proud to ask for help. So I also, again, lost weight in an unhealthy manner, pretty much by starving. And then I went to the military and I regained a little weight and I was healthy weight. I was 200 pounds and I was happy. Then I got out from the military and slowly the weight started creeping onto me again and I went to 240 pounds. Then my wife's daughter died, you know, I was grieving, and within a month, 
because before she died I wanted to give her my kidney, my liver, so I was trying to get a pack in shape, so I was 230 pounds, that's how much I weighed at the time, and then after, you know, uh, after a month of bench eating every day, I went from 230 to 280 pounds, and then I got professional help. And then after I got professional help and I was diagnosed with high blood pressure, guess what? I decided, you know, I don't want to die, I want to live. So I decided to lose the weight and it took me five years to go from 280 to 210 pounds. So 70 pounds in five years, very slow process. But that's the best way to lose weight, slowly. Because this way the weight usually stays off. I'm not saying I'm perfect, I'm far from it. I do have fluctuations, fluctuations of weight, which are significant, you know, and uh, I do bench eat. I have one problem, peanuts, and once a month I do binge, bench eat peanuts. That's pretty much once a month only. It's a significant amount. That's how I could go from 206 to 210 pounds in seven days because I pretty much within one day ate entire bag of peanuts, relatively large bag of peanuts. Maybe not by American standards, but definitely by European standards, a large bag of peanuts. So, you know, that probably gave me like on its own like 3000 calories. That's an incredible amount of calories. But, you know, I can live with binge eating peanuts once a month. I can live with it. I decided that, you know, there's nothing I can do about it, and it's really not that harmful. Um, except, you know, it messes up the balance between, uh, you know, uh, omega-3 and omega-6 acids, but it's not too bad. Uh, five to six days a week, usually six days a week, I do not really intermittent fasting. Many people call it that, but it's not intermittent fasting. Uh, it's, uh, you know, time-restricted feeding. I do you know, fast, do not get any food whatsoever. I do not chew gum, I do not drink diet soda because they have a little calories. They have like half a calorie, which is listed as zero usually. Uh, I do not drink coffee, nothing, like nothing as such. I eat nothing. So that's 16 hours of just water, 16 hours within 24 hours. And I only eat over eight hours a day, usually 99% of time, six days a week. And then I allow myself a little cheat day on Sundays. And I noticed that, uh, you know, uh, the uh, time-restricted feeding has helped, definitely, it has helped. But, you know, my, my habits have changed slowly, but pretty much permanently, because I allowed time. The reason majority of dieters fail is because they go on what's called fat diets. And it's not, they are not called fat diets because they are necessarily bad for you. You know, depends on your physiology. They may be good for you, actually. You know, but they are called fat diets because they fail, because it's very hard to follow them. And I do not get it. You know, I do get it, but I do not get it. On one hand, I can say that extremism is as American as a key lime pie. However, it still doesn't make sense. You know, when people go on a diet, like for example, vegans, I do, I do have days, some days when I eat tofu and I try to eat uh, pretty much vegan food, but I'm not vegan. I'm an omnivore. However, I do reduce the amount of meat I eat. And I do not overeat calories, you know. But for example, some vegans go on an all raw diet or like 80% carbohydrate diet or uh, like uh, people in keto's diet, you know, only very small amount of carbohydrates, just making it so difficult you go into you nine out of ten. You go on to fail. Eventually, you're not gonna be able to sustain that diet. So why to even do it? What's the point? Because you want a shortcut. And to me, another shortcut that's tons and tons of protein. Because experts on aging believe that you age faster when you eat too much protein. However, I do not agree with them either. I try to be moderate. I believe that having a little extra muscle and being happy is more important than dubious gains in a health span and lifespan. You know, I want to have 10 extra pounds. I want a seven extra pounds of muscle and three extra pounds of fat. Because when being obese has been shown 
for 99% of people long term harmful to their health. You know, being 10 pounds overweight sometimes actually has been shown to help in certain conditions. So I do not want to be super skinny. I'm not going to do, you know, what many people do, like lifespan and health span experts do very often, or even Dr. Oz does. No, that's not my goal in life. My goal in life is to be, live half long, li as long lifespan as possible, live as long as possible, but also I don't want to be punishing myself with the diet. Do not punish yourself with the diet. Reward yourself with the diet. Say, I love my body and I will reward my body with a diet. And right now my body is 300 pounds and it's not a happy body. What I'm going to do, it doesn't have to be 300 pounds, you know, but anyway, it's not, not healthy. It's, ob it's obese. So what I say, I say to myself, I love my body and because I love my body, I'm going to reward my body and I'm going to change my habits slowly, but persistently. And of course I do get it because my wife got bariatric surgery because she was taking 30 blood pressure medications. So she was escaping death, sometimes radical, uh, radical, you know, moves are necessary to save your life and save your health. However, if you can possibly do it without bariatric surgery, you should avoid bariatric surgery. Because what I learned from Dr. Noakes, Timothy Noakes, the author of Law of Running, I learned from him the first rule of uh, sports science is avoid unnecessary surgeries. Because they always are complications. Even anesthesia going to influence your brain at least temporarily in a negative way. So that's pretty much it. That's all I have to say. So that's my weight journey, you know, and I hope that you do join people like me who believe in moderation, who try to stay away from ideologies, including food ideologies. Okay. You know, try to stay ideology free, try to stay sane as much as possible. And, uh, you know, who try to lose weight permanently through slow, persistent changes and who love their bodies. And because of that, treat their bodies to the best diet, best diet they can treat the body to. So uh, on that note, all the best to you. Happy weight loss, persistent weight loss and have a good day.